internet friends! Welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lauren Burleson and I am the Canvas Queen. On this channel, we like to talk all things Canvas and I give you some quick tips and tricks if you are using the Canvas LMS platform. So in today's video, we are going to be reviewing how to organize content in Canvas. This is actually a four part video, trying to chunk it down for you guys so that way you have shorter videos, you can choose which ones you wanna watch. In this video, you'll review clickability and flow within Canvas. Now, of course, if you would, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to this channel and like this video. It just helps me reach a bigger, broader audience. All right, so just to review what we'll be discussing, we're gonna go over course layout, organizing modules in Canvas, assignment templates, and then lastly, we'll go over clickability and flow. So our next and last section for organizing content in Canvas is clickability and flow. So this is all about editing your course navigation for students so that they are able to navigate your course really easily and smoothly and then using buttons as well and how that's beneficial for students entering your course. So at the elementary level, I think it's really important to minimize where your students can go. We don't want them entering into tools that they don't use, which I like to call the black hole of Canvas, entering into places you haven't even touched yourself as an instructor. So limit students where they can go within the course, having a maximum of like three navigation tools. I think home modules and announcements is the perfect blend of things to have. Um, then utilizing your homepage for elementary is where you can really customize where you want your students to go and navigate the course because I feel like those buttons at the elementary level really help um, control the flow and navigation for our lovely primary uh, students. So with secondary, Ultimately, it's up to you as the instructor what's important for your students to have access to. Students at the secondary level are obviously able to create their own pathways and to find their work within Canvas. They can navigate a lot easier than elementary. Uh, so we can give them more options. So instead of just having home modules and announcements, we can have them access, you know, their grades so they can review what assignments, you know, maybe they didn't submit. They can also enter in fake scores to evaluate and see if I get this on the test, what does that mean for my core or my score overall in the course? Um, you can have them easily access discussions. People, I think, is a great one because then um, at that level we're doing group work. So if they have access to people, they can get into groups and collaborate in the class. Okay, so in order to edit your navigation, I'm going to actually demonstrate this in a second, but here's kind of the step-by-step -step list on how to do it. You're going to go into settings, you're going to click navigation tab, click and drag unwanted items that you're not using to the bottom. Then you have to scroll down um, and click save. Sometimes we forget that the save button is at the very bottom and it doesn't auto save for you. So just make sure you go to the bottom and you click the blue button that says save. All right, so I am back in my Canvas course and we are gonna go to settings and we're going to adjust the navigation bar. All right, so normally what first pops up is your course details, but we are going to select navigation. So this is currently everything that my students have access to. So we have home, modules, announcements, grades, quizzes, people, and Google Drive. So I am just going to actually remove Google Drive so we can see that we can just click and drag. And then if I want these in a different order, we'll just click disable. If I want these in a different order, I can also move them around. 
So I'll put people on top. And then to save it, we will just go to the bottom. And click save. Now you are able to see within the student view, here are my course navigation tools that I have access to. So really clean, easy, makes it nice for our students to navigate the course and not enter into the black holes. Buttons. Who doesn't love a good button, right? Well, I love buttons. I think they're a great way to navigate students in your course in your own unique way. Again, you have your wonderful homepage, your landing page, and you can navigate your students however you like within that course page. I think also buttons offer less clicks in a lot of ways. They can kind of be a shortcut to some things that require multiple steps. So that's another really great benefit of incorporating buttons. Any link can be added to a button, even um, links or resources that are outside of Canvas. So if you have some sort of like syllabus that's a Google Doc that you've already created, just add the Google Doc link to the button and it'll take your students or let's say a parent observer right there, which is awesome. Not only do you have to use buttons on your homepage, but they can also be added within any assignment, discussion, wherever you want to add a link. And buttons, if you don't want to create a button, you can always just use text and link the text as well to create that navigation in your class. Now, if you like some of the buttons that I have presented here, I do have a Teachers Pay Teachers store that you can access. I have some freebie buttons uh, that you can have just for yourself. So go ahead and check that out if you would like. The first thing to create my button, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to insert word art and I'm gonna add my title of my button. So I'm gonna do module one uh, for those, this is really basic for like an elementary or excuse me, a secondary title. Elementary school, you might want to go with something more like um, math or um, science, whatever subject is, or maybe you want to do your button is about me or whatever, whatever title you feel best. Then I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to click this shape because I like it. And I'm going to click and drag the shape over like so and change the background and or the fill color of the shape and the border, the outline. And then I'm going to go to order, send to the back and you'll see I have my button. Now I don't want to go back to file download as a JPEG image here because it will save this whole slide as an image. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a screenshot. Now, it won't show you on the platform that I'm using to record what a screenshot looks like, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm selecting Shift Command 4, clicking and dragging where I want my image outline to be. So the blue line, the rectangle you see, that's what I'm going to take a picture of. And I'll show you just real quick. I don't think you can see what I'm doing but I just took a screenshot of it and now it's saved to my computer. Okay, so now that I'm in Canvas, what I'm going to do is before I add my images with the image icon, I'm, I want all of, I created more buttons, so I want all of my buttons to be nice and lined up. So I'm actually going to create a table first and I have four buttons, so I created a table with four cells and I'm going to click on the first cell to import my first button. So I'm going to go back the way I did before to upload image and import my first button here. Then I'm going to go actually and do the same with the rest. So I'm going to go back. Actually, this time I went to course images. So these are images that I uploaded in my um, Canvas files before. And I'm going to import my other buttons that I created into the table and last one here
Okay, so now I have all four of my buttons. You can see they're all nice, uh, neat in a row. Now to get rid of the outline of the table, you're just gonna select any one of the pictures and then go back up to the table icon, go to table properties, advanced, select border style. You want it hidden with the border color white. Now I do this because this one only gets the outside of the table. This one gets the inside border of the table. So now you can see it looks nice and um, neat and it looks like they're standing independently. Last part I'm going to show you is how to add a link. So you're going to click on whatever image you want and then go up to this link icon. I'm going to do a course link. External links you can add whatever like let's say a YouTube video link, um, a website link, whatever you want. I'm just going to go to my pages here because I already have a page ready to go that's marked module one. And that one is now has a link. So I'm going to save this. Okay, so now you can see here's my home page. And when I click on this module, it should now, or button module, it should take me to a new page. And now if I want, I can go back. And that's how you create buttons for Canvas. So as I stated before, you don't have to use buttons only on your homepage. You can use them um, within assignments, discussions, quizzes. Um, you saw earlier when I was using my little HTML copy paste code that I have a turn in assignment help button on every single assignment. So that's a button with a, a hyperlink. Uh, so as you can see the example here as well, I not only use them on um, assignments, but also on quizzes. So this is just in case like they need help. They have this um, button will take them to a page that shows the step-by-step -step guide on how to submit an assignment or how to complete a quiz. So just something really nice and easy for them to access as a confused student if needed. I also have buttons on pages uh, to help navigate my students. So you can see here starting over on the left side, uh, click to view the Canvas page. So you click on the page and then the page has buttons. So this is on my um, how to use Canvas or module zero resource page. So I have multiple things there, a home, you know, home page, like what do you do when you are on the home page, submit assignment, discussion, quizzes. So these are all how to buttons and they're big, nice and bolded. So when they click on it, for example, let's say they click on the submit assignment button, it takes them to a page that has all the resources for them. Now that page doesn't necessarily return them back unless I have, I created additional button in the top corner that says return to module zero using Canvas page. So we can use buttons to return to the page within the module. We can use um, buttons to, you know, take them to a, a another page that's not in the module, you can use buttons however you like. And I think that's one thing that's really great about buttons in Canvas. All right, friends, well, thank you so much for finishing this video. Again, there are multiple parts of this four part series. So if you would like to see the other parts of the video, they will be linked in the description below. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.